Welcome folks to the studio. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the method to the madness of an artist. And I have a lot of systems and uh, procedures I use that might seem crazy or uh, irrational, but uh, it could be a little bit of madness as well, but that madness produces uh, unique original work and the goal for all artists is to create a decent volume of work so you can see your progression and and ultimately have a product I mean at the same product. time it kind of it's like polishing a diamond it's like um, refining all your artistic sensibilities just to create a unique piece of work that's very unique to you and special so if you remember uh, out of boredom I will create a lot of projects just to refresh me and keep me interested and defeat boredom but out of boredom I think last winter January or February I created this um, abstract floral in a vase and this would be defined somewhat as abstract realism because I'm taking a uh, realistic image, representational image, and I'm, and I'm forcing it into my um, abstract kind of language and, and symbology that you see my bigger abstract work. So you see how similar it is, yet it's, uh, it's just a little bit on the borderline of representational. And uh, what the beauty is, when you create so many pieces at once, and you keep progressing honestly on them, you're going to reach a point that they finish. So this week, I think I have three to four pieces, pieces that are finished, and uh, I'm going to sign them all here today and go over some of the finished pieces and uh, explain what I was doing. So here's, I think you might remember if you look at previous videos, this is a one of my mixed media vases, abstraction, vase, floral, it could be a still life, yet it's not. It has all the uh, fractals of uh, botany and plant life taken apart. I've deconstructed it, put it back together in my own personal abstract, and uh, this baby's finished. So this I'm going to sign here. And uh, I have another one here. Same thing. I've destroyed all the fractals of natural botany and I'm recreating uh, my abstract, my own visual voice. So these pieces actually started just like this. I'm going to show you. You're not going to believe it. So I threw down on this, uh, it's a nice watercolor paper, it's either a Fabriano or Arches, and it's a archival 100% rag paper, and basically that's just acrylic brushwork, and out of that I'm going to pull out another abstracted floral, I have maybe the hints of a vase here, I'm starting to create the motion I want, but I'm not done here, but this is the absolute beginning, maybe three minutes work, maybe 30 seconds worth of work, and that's how I begin my uh, abstract pieces, and I don't do any premeditation, pre-sketching, I just dive in and go, and just let the pressure and the uh, crucible of choices mold the work. Here's one I, I actually don't like this, it's a little too representational, it's on the borderline of uh, abstraction. And uh, it just needs to get pushed further. It's just a little too real for me. It's not abstract enough. And I have one more piece here that's on paper. And this one I like quite a bit. A lot of people responded positively to it. It has an Asian feel to it. I like it. I need to do some more work up, up in this area. I don't know what. But I want to keep this pretty much static. I like the loose feeling and I want to push my work 
more this way that you see in here and in here and here I'm trying to create some motion with the energy and let it run off the paper to create um, more energy and this is one other piece this is done on a canvas and once I sign this this canvas I'm going to do kind of a, uh, a repeat of how I uh, preserve my mixed media work so I'm going to revisit how I uh, take the first layer and apply a fixative to it. I use a center layer oil pastel fixative. So I'm going to show you all how I do that again. And then once that dries and sets up, I hit the uh, top, the whole surface with cold wax, maybe two treatments of cold wax, and then I burnish and polish that into a nice matte finish. But today I'm going to sign these. And then I'm going to do one more thing that I've learned on YouTube. You know, you can always learn on YouTube, and that is um, take the back of this canvas, and I'm going to try on a smaller, one of my smaller pieces, and I might gesso the back. They say gessoing the back can help preserve your work. I might gesso it or hit it with an acrylic uh, matte varnish. So that might help the canvas from oxidizing over the next few hundred years. I'm sure uh, I'm not going to be around, so it won't matter. But whoever has it on their wall, it might matter too. So there you go. Let me sign these babies and um, run the camera over these. It is a little more of a close-up so you can see how I brought these to a finish. Okay, hang on there.